in this video uh, we would like to uh, observe an uh, example uh, and in that example we would determine the Fourier series coefficients so as you are familiar with the uh, Fourier series expression that we can represent any time domain signals as a summation of complex exponentials right time domain periodic signal we can represent time domain periodic signal as a summation of uh, complex exponentials right and uh, where uh, these a of a sub k uh, are given by expression 1 over t integral over t x of t e raised to power minus j uh, minus j k omega naught t and dt so we have to evaluate this integral uh, we have to evaluate this integral let me draw it uh, properly so we have to evaluate this integral actually uh, so a k's are given by this expression uh, and this one and give us the uh, representation of a continuous time periodic signal as a summation as a summation of uh, complex exponentials and we have seen that these exponentials actually are sinusoids in my previous videos these are uh, cosine and sine wave forms because we can use uh, Euler identity to represent this polar form of uh, it is for j k omega naught t in the rectangular form which is cause of k omega naught t plus j sine of omega naught k omega naught t so let's see uh, a couple of examples uh, as an example one uh, as an example one let me uh, write example one and uh, in this example we would take a simple signal x of t and try to determine uh, suppose our x of t is just a sinusoid sine of omega naught t and we are interested in finding out a k a sub k for this one so uh, a very straightforward method using the Euler identity you can write sine of uh, omega naught t uh, as e raised to the power j omega naught t uh, minus e raised to the power minus j omega naught t whole divided by 2j right so this is how you can uh, using the Euler identity and the uh, expressions which we derived in the previous video you can write sine of omega naught t uh, in terms of complex exponentials and uh, you can just rewrite it as 1 over 2j e raised to the power j omega naught t minus 1 over 2j e raised to the power minus j omega naught t so this is how we can represent our x of t which is a sinusoid uh, if we compare this equation with the one above uh, uh, specifically with the equation which we say uh, with this one right summation of k minus infinity to plus infinity and you have a sub k e raised to the power j k omega naught t right so this if you compare these two the, uh, the equation which we derived with this one the Fourier series representation of x of t if you compare these two you can see that actually uh, the this one this one is you can obtain e raised to j omega naught t if you substitute uh, if you substitute one for this k here so one means a one a sub one so we would this is actually the first uh, actually uh, uh, for k equal to one for k equal to one so this would be this is the term this one is the term uh, which represent a uh, with k equal to one similarly if you observe here 
if you substitute this one you can get this exponential if you substitute k equal to minus 1 so this uh, it means this value over here this value over here would be the value of a minus 1 as uh, if you uh, compare these two equations so this is how uh, you can compare these two equations and you can see the value of a of 1 and a of minus 1 just by comparison just by observing these and just by the uh, comparison of these two equations so let's try to compare these two equations and I would like to write I would like to write uh, I would like to so uh, if you expand this uh, summation you can expand this summation right and you can have many because the summation here has infinite terms this summation has infinite terms but we see that our x of t has only two terms finite terms and among all those infinite terms we have only the value for uh, k1 and k of minus 1 so we have only two terms uh, in this summation uh, if we compare it with x of t so just two terms the rest of the terms are zero so uh, by comparing these two by comparing these two specifically if i write all uh, this summation if i expand it i can write it okay a of uh, minus 2 e raised to the power minus j k2 omega naught t uh, then a of minus 1 e raised to the power minus uh, j omega naught t k the value of k is 1 then i can write a naught right a naught then i can write another term which is uh, a of 1 e raised to the power j omega naught t then i can write another term a to e raised to the power j 2 omega naught t and so on actually the summation uh, this expression means that we have infinite terms but if you compare if you compare these two if you compare these two now let me uh, clearly mention it here that if you compare these two uh, what actually you see if you compare the first now now let me compare let me compare uh, this one let me compare this equation right let me compare this equation with this expanded one right if I this is x of t compare these two now now you can clearly see that you have uh, e raised to the power j omega naught t which is here a1 e raised to the power j omega naught t so here you have a1 e raised to the power j omega naught t okay and the second term which we have uh, actually it's all addition right so we should have an addition here and we can say this is our second term. so the second term which you observe this one it's the e raised to the power minus j omega naught t it's here so you have just this term and for all the rest of the terms this a case a minus 2 is 0 a 2 is 0 and similarly all other a sub case so you can write you can write this equation that in our x of t we have uh, uh, just just to uh, after comparison we conclude we conclude that a of 1 is actually equal to 1 over 2j and our a of minus 1 is actually equal to 1 minus 1 over 2j right so this is our a of 1 and a sub minus a sub 1 and a sub minus 1 so these are the values of a and for the rest uh, uh, all a k's are 0 except k equal to uh, if k is not equal to plus 1 or minus 1 so all a k's are zero all a k's are zero if k is not equal to plus one or minus one right so if k is not equal to plus one or minus one 
it would be zero this is what we see uh, after comparison of these two equations so uh, these are this is how we uh, determine a uh, sub k uh, the Fourier coefficients uh, by comparison by the method of comparison now let's try a bit uh, 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 a little a different example uh, a bit tricky one let's see the another one and uh, in this example let's let me write the example first we have an example of Fourier series and uh, here our x of t our x of t is a real waveform is a real waveform uh, which is given by this mathematical uh, description that it is x of t is unity one when mod t is less than t1 and it is zero uh, when your mod t is between uh, t1 and capital t over 2 right if it is between t1 and capital T over 2 so let's uh, try to understand this and then we would like to plot it if uh, I uh, if you are interested in plotting this one okay before uh, solving this let me uh, give you a review of this mod operation if you have a complex number a plus JB for example and you are interested in its mod what would you do the mod is given by square root of a square plus b square right so if you have uh, just uh, for example you have minus 1 minus 1 and you are interested in its mod so you can write it minus 1 plus j0 b0 and you would say that it is equal to minus 1 square plus 0 square which is unity right similarly if any negative number would have a positive value mod so you can determine its magnitude like this magnitude is always positive so this is the uh, keep this in mind when we say mod t is less than capital t1 so what do we mean uh, let me now uh, let me now plot this uh, uh, signal when we say let me plot this signal with the help of uh, this discussion suppose I have a time axis t and I'm interested in plotting my x of t right uh, when we say t1 suppose t1 is a point some point over here so we can also have a neg point minus t1 with the same uh, let me plot it very accurately uh, let's do it this way uh, it's still uh, up to here maybe okay still not okay okay suppose these are t1 and minus t1 uh, now when we say mod of t less than t1 so you can see that in this figure that all these points which are positive values of t time positive values of time for all these if you uh, compute the mod of a positive number you will get a positive number and all these points for all these points which are infinite points your mod of uh, t is less than t1 mod of t is less than t1 so it means and the signal here is unity right similarly for all the points which are in this range these are all negative values of t, uh, t with this over zero these are all negative values of t but in this range we still have mod of t if you compute mod of t it would be less than t1 right it's always positive mod is always positive so it would be less than t1 and our signal is unity here so this is our signal which is given it it uh, it's one unity from minus t1 up to t1 and then up to uh, the uh, t over 2 and minus t over 2 it's given that uh, in the second uh, if you see the next step it is given that you are if your mod is between t over 2 and t1 if your mod is between t over 2 and t1 then your signal your signal is actually uh, it is 0 
it is zero you are seeing x of t is zero it's given right so for all these points here these points if you compute the mod if you these are the time uh, the points on time axis for all these points as well as all these are positive points all positive points if you compute the mod it will be uh, between t1 and t capital t over 2 similarly for all these negative values if you compute the mod mod of t if you compute the mod of t again it would be uh, between t1 and t2 and in this region your signal is zero so basically your signal waveform looks like this it's your signal waveform so this is how uh, we draw the signal and as uh, the signal is periodic so it would repeat itself right and it would be repeat itself again uh, somewhere like this and similarly here it would repeat itself and it goes on so this is a periodic signal uh, which can be drawn this way so you can see over a period the shape of the signal and it is unity only from minus t1 up to t1 now with this uh, knowledge uh, with this knowledge this is how you can uh, plot your signal first so that you have uh, you can visualize the mathematical equation uh, graphically so you should be able to draw these signals graphically uh, once you draw it graphically now let's try to compute uh, the Fourier coefficients right so let's compute the Fourier coefficient for this signal uh, first of all as you know we have the uh, a k's a k's are given by 1 over t integral over time uh, x of t e raised to the power minus j k omega naught t so we can straight forward uh, dt uh, if you put uh, k equal to 0 you can find a naught which is a constant which is a constant and just substitute k 0 here you would get a naught 1 over t and you have to integrate the signal x of t and this part for k equal to 0 e raised to the power minus j you have a 0 here omega naught t dt so this part this part is actually e raised to the power 0 e raised to the power 0 is unity so let me erase this one let me erase this part and i would write uh, i would write 0 here right so let me erase this one uh, let me erase everything and we would say that we are actually we are actually uh, computing this integral so uh, we know that over a period from minus t to we uh, it's easier for us to compute our signal uh, from t2 over minus t2 over 2 over this is just one period plus t over 2 so this is the period of our signal so if we compute our signal in this uh, duration and our signal uh, in this duration you can see that for the rest of the time it is zero except uh, for these values so let me uh, you it is zero only uh, we can just erase this one and i would say uh, okay let me this is d of t and from minus from minus t1 up to plus t1 this integral is it's enough to integrate it in this region because the signal is non-zero signal is non-zero in this region minus t1 up to t1 for the rest of the period it is zero in this whole time interval and uh, now if i integrate it over 1 over t and from minus t1 up to t1 the signal is unity if you integrate this one a uh, simple integral right a simple integral which would give you uh, okay it, it would give you 1 over t and then we have uh, the integral is t we put the limit minus t1 to plus t1 if you substitute these limits 1 over t uh, upper limit 
minus the lower limit right upper limit minus the lower limit and you can see that it is actually equal to 2 times t1 over t which is a constant t1 is a constant t is also a constant and you get a constant a naught now we can uh, determine other values of k this was uh, easier and straightforward we can determine other values uh, of a k by uh, evaluating this generalized expression uh, integral over t and this is from minus t1 up to plus t1 right and our x of t is 1 so let me uh, integrate minus j k omega naught t dt we are actually integrating here x of t is 1 right in this so a k uh, our expression for a k reduces to this one for uh, a sub k so let's uh, compute this integral it's uh, basically 1 over t and if we integrate it e raised to the power minus j k omega naught t over minus j k omega naught k omega naught and you have to substitute these limits which is from minus t1 up to uh, plus t1 so let's try to uh, in introduce these limits it's 1 over minus j k omega naught capital t and if you sub put these limits it's actually e raised to the power minus j minus j k omega naught t1 upper limit minus e raised to the power minus j k omega naught minus t1 the lower limit right so if you just substitute these limits and our expression uh, reduces to uh, our expression reduces to now you can see this negative here negative here so this would become positive right uh, and this negative you would uh, just introduce it you would just apply this uh, to this uh, to this expression so we we are left with 1 over j k omega naught t and inside you have e raised to the power j this one first which is positive uh, and this negative becomes positive because of this uh, negative at the outside outside of this uh, bra these brackets so a raised to the power j k omega naught t1 minus e raised to the power minus j k omega naught t1 so this is our simplified expression so if this is our simplified expression this is our simplified expression and uh, we can write this one as just uh, divide it by 2 and multiply by 2 if you divide and multiply by 2 uh, using the uh, expression which we uh, using the expression above using the expression above it's actually uh, you can rewrite it you can rewrite it as uh, okay I'll take this J also here uh, so that the, we can write the expression if you write this J here just erase it from this, this place and I'll write it I'll write it here to J so basically this one is basically this one is sine of k omega naught t right this one is basically a sine of k omega naught t so you can rewrite this expression as two times sine of uh, k omega naught t1 k omega naught t1 over uh, k omega naught capital t so this is uh, our expression right now for a sub k a generalized expression and uh, we can write this one we can further uh, simplify this and we can write it as uh, now keep this in mind if you observe this closely you have omega naught t here and omega naught t uh, is actually equal to 2 pi 
right? We already know this at omega naught t is actually equal to 2 pi for this complex exponential. Uh, so if your omega naught t is equal to 2 pi, uh, you can replace here this omega naught t by 2 pi. And here we have omega naught t1, right? Omega naught t1. If you go back to your uh, diagram, which we have drawn, it's our signal is somewhere like this. Uh, from minus t1 t1 this is minus t over 2 this is t over 2 so if we assume if we assume that this is also equal to t1 it's not given right we are just assuming suppose this is also equal to t1 so uh, if this is also equal to t1 this one is 0 if this is also equal to t1 it means our time interval capital T is actually equal to 4 times t1 4 times t1 t1 1 2 3 and 4 4 times t1 our time interval is actually equal to 4 times t1 so uh, from here if we say omega t is equal to uh, omega naught t is equal to 2 pi we can also write that omega naught 4 times t1 is equal to 2 pi and from here from here we can we can write that omega naught t1 would be equal to pi over 2 right so just replace this omega naught t1 and k, uh, this is actually 2 times sine of k pi over 2 omega naught t1 and k omega naught t is 2 pi 2 pi now this 2 you can see these two cancels here and you are left with sine of k pi over 2 divided by k pi this is the expression for a sub k this is your expression for a sub k uh, now uh, once you get the expression right but here you keep in mind that k is not equal to 0 because for k 0 we already derived an expression uh, because if you put k equal to 0 this would be 0 over 0 case which is undefined right so for, for a, that is why for a sub naught we already uh, have a value and you can see that a, the value of a sub naught uh, is also given you can see that the value of a sub naught uh, is which we derived above is given by 4 times uh, no it was uh, it was not 4 times it was actually 2 times t1 over t and assuming that capital T is equal to uh, 4 times t1 we can say that our a naught is actually equal to half right now uh, we from the uh, from our expression above uh, we can find a1 a1 uh, how we can find a1 you just see here uh, sine of put uh, 1 here in this expression put uh, 1 here k equal to 1 so you would get a1 sine of pi by 2 you would get sine of sine of a k k is 1 so you have pi by 2 over 1 times pi right so this is actually sine of pi by 2 is 1 and 1 over pi this is your a1 the value of a1 similarly you can compute put uh, a equal to 2 here and you would get sine of uh, 2 times pi over 2 and this is 2 pi so sine of uh, 2 times pi over 2 means sine of pi sine of pi is actually 0 so you get a2 is equal to 0 similarly you would for any uh, even number for any even number this expression sine of 2 pi sine of 4 pi sine of 6 pi all are 0 so for, uh, a2 a4 a6 all would be 0 a2 is 0 similarly you would have a4 0 and so on and so on so all Fourier coefficients with k uh, uh, even with k equal to even would be uh, zero uh, for k 
odd we computed one for a1 now let's compute for a3 if i compute a3 that would be sine of 3 pi by 2 over 3 pi and sine of 3 pi by 2 is actually equal to minus 1 so it's minus 1 over 3 pi similarly you can compute a5 which is sine of 5 pi over 2 uh, over 5 pi and that is actually equal to uh, 1 over 5 pi sine of pi pi over 2 is uh, 1 uh, you can quickly uh, find this sign uh, if you see this is if you go here this is pi over 2 sine of pi over 2 is unity if you come here this is pi angle sine of pi is 0 come here it's, uh, 3 pi by 2 and it is minus 1 it is 1 minus 1 here and 2 again 0 and is 5 pi you come here complete round 5 pi again you will get a 1 so you can quickly find these Fourier coefficients and so on you can continue it for others once you find these Fourier coefficients right you can find these Fourier coefficients the next uh, step is to draw these coefficients so let's try to draw our Fourier coefficients on the k axis so for 0 we have half right suppose this is half uh, for 1 and minus 1 k1 and minus 1 we have 1 over pi so 1 over 3.14 suppose it's somewhere here you can just draw it to the you can draw it to the scale uh, 2 would be 0 minus 2 minus 2 would also be 0 right so we have 0 here and 3 and minus 3 uh, would be minus uh, it's given minus 1 over 3 pi so it would be minus 1 over 3 pi a smaller magnitude right uh -huh. this 2 not 2 I have drawn it at 2 so it should be here this one and this one right minus 1 over 3 pi this is 1 over pi and this is half right similarly you can draw others these are the Fourier coefficients now you can see uh, your signal with Fourier coefficients and actually uh, it gives you what these Fourier coefficients uh, give you it gives you the frequency co content it gives you the knowledge of the frequency content of x of t because if you have greater a k a sub k is greater it means that frequency higher magnitude you see you multiply a greater constant with that particular sinusoid so higher magnitude of that frequency higher uh, that frequency with uh, higher magnitude is available or you can say more content of that frequency is available in our x of t similarly if you have a uh, smaller value the the more you compute here you will get these values smaller and smaller so higher frequency component higher frequency components are uh, the the content of higher frequency component is lower as compared to the low frequency components in our x of t this is uh, what a sub k gives you uh, and as i uh, discuss it usually in my uh, with my students that if you consider the fourier series if you consider the expression of the fourier series that you have x of t which is actually the summation for all k uh, a sub k e raised to the power minus j uh, sorry plus j k omega naught t if you observe this it's actually the summation uh, well you can also uh, instead of this omega naught instead of this omega naught you can always uh, you can also write to uh, you can also write 2 pi over t right you can also write this one it's the same thing because omega naught is actually equal to 2 pi over t so uh, 
this is actually uh, what this expression shows that your x of t is the uh, summation of these complex exponentials and we have seen that these complex exponentials are basically sinusoids and uh, the lower value of k the lower value of k represents represents uh, a sinusoid with lower frequencies sinusoids with lower frequencies sinusoid with lower frequency lower frequencies and the higher value of k the higher value of k uh, represent sinusoid sinusoid with uh, sinusoid with higher frequency with higher frequency right so if you have the for a lower value of k if you have a k the greater value of a sub k it means that frequency more content of that frequency is available in your x of t for higher frequencies as k increases they represent higher uh, because this k is actually the kth harmonic so higher uh, sinusoids sinusoids with higher frequency you usually have a k lower as we have seen in this example which means that in our x of t in our x of t uh, the frequency the lower frequency the, the higher frequencies content is lower or you can say the uh, content of the kth harmonic is represented by the coefficient a sub k this, this is the Fourier coefficients I usually uh, ask my student to find these Fourier coefficients and they just they are just like the uh, very similar if you have ever gone to a doctor and uh, he asks you to bring your uh, blood test which is usually a complete blood picture that quant that complete blood picture actually gives quantitative analysis of your uh, blood uh, the constituents of your blood so uh, it give it gives information about the red blood cells and how many red blood cells uh, the white blood cells how many white blood cells right or what is the percentage of white blood cells so that gives you the the the, the quantitative analysis of your signal and here these Fourier coefficients Fourier coefficients actually give us the uh, quantitative analysis of these uh, uh, signals x of t if you have x of t and you find the Fourier coefficients a case it gives you the co that that type of quantitative analysis very similar to the complete blood picture it's the complete uh, information of the signal that what is the magnitude what is the content frequency content of your uh, frequency content of uh, the, the, your signals it gives you the co constituents of uh, your frequency constituents of your signal so uh, the value of ak determines uh, whether that frequency the lower frequencies uh, have a higher magnitude or higher frequencies have a higher magnitude whatever is the uh, level it is given by this ak right uh, later on we will see that it has the phase information as well because uh, AKs are usually complex AKs are AKs are usually complex when it is a complex when AK is complex it means it, it you can represent AK in the form of e raised to power j theta right so it has the magnitude as well as the phase so that particular harmonic kth harmonic uh, that particular kth harmonic uh, will have the uh, it, it gives you information about the amplitude of that particular harmonic as well as the phase of that harmonic but uh, right so it gives you the phase information as well as the amplitude information of the kth harmonic a sub k so it has this information uh, well this is uh, uh, about the Fourier series let me summarize this uh, with the with this example let me summarize our uh, uh, Fourier series representation because we just uh, saw the exponential form uh, of this representation that is we just saw uh, x of t as a summation as a summation of uh, for all k or for k minus infinity to plus infinity a sub k e raised to the power j k omega naught t we saw this expression which is uh, 
एक्सपोनेंशियल एक्सप्रेशन राइट एक्सपोनेंशियल एक्सपोनेंशियल फॉर वी समटाइम्स वी वी रेफर टू दिस वन एज द एक्सपोनेंशियल फॉर्म ऑफ फोर ईयर सीरीज रिप्रेजेंटेशन यू कैन ऑल्सो डिराइव इट्स रेक्टेंगुलर फॉर्म सो एंड इट्स क्वाइट ईजी इफ यू एज आई एज आई सेड दैट ए सब के ए as i said that a sub k can be represented in the form of uh, in polar form right it's usually complex so if it is a complex you can represent it uh, in in polar form and if you substitute this polar form in x of t right if you put it here your x of t uh, your you can rewrite your expression you can rewrite this expression uh as some for all k for all k it's a k e raised to the power j k omega not t uh plus theta k you can rewrite it in this form right you can rewrite it in this form uh in the polar form which gives you the uh phase related to the kth harmonic it gives you the phase related to the kth harmonic uh, the uh, kth uh, harmonic now uh, let's try to uh, write this exponential form in the uh, in 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 uh, as a rectangular form so we would take this one first let me take this x of t and i would like to write it uh, uh, i would like to write it in a different form let me let me write it this way x of t is uh because this is from minus infinity to plus infinity right from minus infinity to plus infinity so uh if i separate uh if i uh, if i separate suppose my x of t uh x of t is equal to uh this one from minus infinity to plus infinity so for k0 is one term so let me write the k0 term separately then uh the rest are for plus minus 1 plus minus 2 plus minus uh, 3 and so on so i can write these terms as k uh 1 to infinity right and then i would say that okay a of k e raised to the power j k omega not t plus a minus k e raised to power minus j k omega not t so the same expression can be rewritten in this form as well right we can rewrite it we can rewrite our expression x of t we can rewrite our expression x of t uh in this form as well so you can see that these are actually infinite terms 1 to infinity all positive terms are included in this one one minus 1 to minus infinity all negative terms are included in this term so we uh, rewrite x of t uh, uh we rewrite x of t in this form and now uh, we can easily uh we can see that uh, it's uh, a of k and a of minus k a of k because x of t is real and when x of t is real your a of k and a of minus k would be equal so when x of t is real we are talking about the real periodic signal a of k and a of minus k would be uh they those would be equal as we have seen in the above examples as well that our a of k and a of minus k are uh equal with this uh, equality if you uh make them equal right if you make them equal uh you can rewrite it you can uh, rewrite this expression you can uh, rewrite this expression as this one you can rewrite x of t uh you can rewrite x of t as a dot plus uh summation let me let me change my marker plus summation k 1 to infinity and uh this uh, could be easily written as two times the real part of two times the real part of a k e raised to the power j k omega not t we can rewrite it in this form 
uh, how we rewrite it in this form the real part of this one now you can see th these are equal so you can uh, bring it back outside you can just bring these two uh, if they are equal you can just take it common so put a k common right a k uh, common and then you are inside you have e raised power j k omega naught t e raised power minus j k omega naught t divide this one by 2 multiply this one by this expression by 2 right so you have uh, you have basically division by 2 and you have basically division by 2 and multiplication by 2 now this is the expression for cos of k omega naught t cos of k omega naught t is the real part of this one right cos of k omega naught t now your expression if you see your expression basically your expression is if you observe it basically your expression becomes x of t which is a naught plus two times two times uh, summation uh, for all k k1 to infinity and uh, this is cos of uh, cos of k omega naught t right it basically uh, reduces to this one with that division and multiplication by 2 so what is this uh, this in this we have a k as well a k also so basically this is the real part if you observe e raised to power j k omega naught t j let me write it separately here so if you observe e raised to the power j k omega naught t if i e raised to the power j k k omega naught t so that is cos of k omega naught t plus j sine of k omega naught t and if i see say the real part of this exponential the real part is actually this one this one is the imaginary part so that is why we have written our expression here we have written this expression we have written this expression right so this you can write it as a real part let me uh, rewrite this one let me rewrite this one uh, very quickly uh, x of t so our x of t is basically our x of t is now a naught and we can write for k 1 to infinity it's 2 times the real part 2 times the real part of a k e raised to the power j k omega naught t so now you write your expression in this form uh, now you can uh, put a k a sub k equal to in the polar form e raised to power j theta k right and your x of t your x of t with this one can be re it can be rewritten as k1 to infinity 2 times the real part of a k e raised to the power j and it's k omega naught t plus theta k so it's a uh, this is uh, another form uh, and you can further write this one you can further uh, rewrite this expression you can further rewrite this expression as a naught plus two times two times k one to infinity a sub k cos of k omega naught t plus theta k right so this is our expression now uh, if you write uh, a k if you write a k in the form of in rectangular form b k plus j c k you would get the rectangular form of the Fourier series and the rectangular form of Fourier series can be rewritten as a not just substitute this one and you can easily write for k equal to 1 up to infinity b k cos of k omega naught t minus c k sine of k sine of k omega naught t this is called the rectangular form 
of a rectangular form of the Fourier series and here keep in mind we have used the identity we have uh, used the identity uh, cos of cos of uh, theta plus uh, cos of alpha plus beta you can say cos of uh, cos of alpha plus beta which is cos alpha cos beta minus sine alpha sine beta so if you use this identity if you use this identity uh, if you use this identity here you would come up uh, you can compute it as this one the real part just the real part right that's the real part would be uh, you can uh, write it in this rectangular form so this is the rectangular form of the uh, Fourier series now we learned that the exponential form and uh, the rectangular form the polar form as well as the rectangular form of Fourier series